time, but when I was going through it, they always talked about how like the Purdue program felt like a family and there's only, it's so small and like condensed that you really feel like, you know, everyone. And I like, didn't, not that I didn't believe it, but Purdue's a huge campus. So I was like, there's no, way I'm going to know everyone right now. It's my first year with our whole class. And there's 150 of us, 125 of them. I know their name and face and talk to them all the time. So it's like a this small, like feel where it, it like feels like a real family, I think is a big reason why I chose Purdue and especially pharmacy. Thanks, Katie. All right, hi everyone. So I'm Kara, I'm actually from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I'm an out of state student. Um, as for why I came to Purdue, I do get that question a lot being so far away from home. Um, but what Sydney and Katie touched on, Purdue really, really is such a welcoming community of people. I came here during my sophomore year of high school um, just as a general tour and I actually reached out to one of um, the pharmacy advisors um, to see if I could be able to talk to them, ask a few questions. She fit me right in immediately with her schedule um, and actually that day she connected me with um, a Purdue student that I eventually came back to shadow with. Um, and so I never really got that experience with any other campus. Um, everybody here was just so nice um, and welcoming. So I definitely felt um, drawn into Purdue right away. Um, as for pharmacy, so I really liked chemistry in high school. Um, that kind of led me to pharmacy a little bit. Um, and I kind of formed my uh, college search around there. Um, and I kind of just fell in love more with uh, pharmacy as I kind of went along. Um, I just love the idea of being able to be this leader in the community that could help people um, get them their medications, everything that they needed, um, and kind of being that uh, role model to other people. Thank you. Pam, do you want to just briefly introduce yourself and share a little bit of your background and being a Purdue alum, kind of talk about your experience? Sure. Um, so I graduated from Purdue a long time ago, and then I was out in retail for 25 years. I worked for OSCO before they got bought out, and then I moved over to Kroger. And I can honestly say that I absolutely loved my job, um, feeling a part of the community, being able to help people every day. Um, had some customers that followed me to all six of my stores, um, which was an honor. Um, I really wanted to come back and just do something different and be able to work with students some more. Um, so this is, you know, I decided when I turned 50 that I'd start looking around. I wanted to get through COVID because I'm very passionate about vaccines, gave about 10,000 COVID shots. Um, so that extended me to 51, but now I'm back. Um, very happy to be here. Hopefully I will be seeing and meeting a lot of you and help you pick your career paths and advise you along the way, so. Very excited that you've all uh, looking at Purdue and gonna be a part of the family. Thanks, Pam. She has been such a great resource for us. We just love having a pharmacist on staff. It's just been so fun. Um, so I, I heard for sure Sydney mention it. Um, one of the main reasons that I hear over and over and over again of why students choose pharmacy is exactly what Sydney said. I want to help people. I want to be in the healthcare field. I do not want the blood and guts and bodily fluids. I don't know if I want that 2 a.m. emergency phone call. I don't know if I want to be in school for 10 plus years. This is such a nice compromise. At Purdue, you graduate in six years with a doctorate degree. You are a doctor. You are a leader in your community, and you don't even really have to touch people all that often in some of the career paths to be a pharmacist. So it really is kind of the best of all of the aspects of healthcare and helping people. So just to share briefly with you a little bit about our program, we have two majors in the College of Pharmacy. One is the PharmD that our students have been talking about, two years of pre-pharmacy coursework, you then apply to pharmacy school, like you would apply to medical school or dental school or law school, four years of pharmacy school, and then you graduate after six years with your doctorate of pharmacy. That allows you to then go on to work 
in a community pharmacy, in a hospital, in industry, gosh, there are hundreds and hundreds of career paths. My guess would be when I ask you to picture a pharmacist, you would probably say somebody in a white coat at a CVS or a Walgreens counting pills. And that is not inaccurate. However, there are so many more career paths that I think students just don't even know about. And I hope to talk a little bit about some of those tonight. The other major that we offer, we call it BSPS. So it's a Bachelor of Science in Pharmaceutical Sciences. That is our four-year degree. And this is probably gonna be a huge overgeneralization. But if I could give you the main difference between the two, if you think that you are the person that is going to cure, find the cure for cancer or discover the cure for Alzheimer's, um, you really want to take a current drug and make it work faster, make it less painful, make it less expensive. That BSPS is really focused on drug discovery and drug development, and it tends to be very research based. Our six year Farm D is similar coursework, but the added component is that there is going to be the patient aspect of it. So as a pharmacist, you have a level of knowledge up here about the different drugs and how they work in the body, but you need to be able to talk to a patient who has nowhere near that level of knowledge and make sure that they understand dosing and side effects and the importance of completing your medication. So there's that added patient component, and that's probably the main difference between the two. The first two years of both programs are almost exactly the same in terms of coursework. So if you're sitting there right now thinking, gosh, I don't know, they both sound super cool. How would I decide? You don't have to decide right away. You can take some classes in both, and there is a class called Farm 100 that really shares a lot of different career paths for both the PharmD and the BSPS. So you can be learning about that while you're keeping the door to both programs open. Um, so if I could ask you guys to share a little bit about what you hope to do with your degree when you graduate. And I understand you may likely change your mind 18 times between now and the time that you graduate. And that's okay. And that's kind of a nice thing about the PharmD is it is a generalist degree. So you can do whatever you want upon graduation and you don't have to decide that until you graduate. So you don't have to know early on what you wanna specialize in, if at all, until you graduate. So Sydney, I'll start with you again. And just every time I ask a question, we'll just go in that same order. Yeah, sure. Um, right now, I'm kind of looking into ambulatory care, which is kind of like a little, it's almost like the hidden gem of pharmacy other than nuclear pharmacy. But um, can you talk a little care, bit about what that is? Sure. So ambulatory care, it's a little hard to define black and white, I guess, but it's almost to me, it's more of a mix of your typical like white coat in a CVS versus people in a hospital. Um, a lot of ambulatory care pharmacists work specifically with, you know, if you have diabetes or, or a cardiovascular disease or something like that, um, you have to come see a pharmacist to help, you know, manage your medications, just kind of check out what's going on, things like that, and just keep you in order. Um, there's also ambulatory care pharmacists in um, kind of like almost like a family doctor type setting um, or just on like the in the pharmacies that are in hospitals that aren't the ones that are preparing your IV bags, things like that. So it's kind of your in between type deal. I'd say that's what I'm most interested in right now. Perfect. And then I also just wanted to like mention yeah. once we get to a point, um, Kara and I are actually both in the honors college. I saw a question in the chat, yeah. so we can, awesome. we will come back to that. Perfect. Thank you, Sydney. Yeah. Um, with my PharmD, I, since the beginning have said I wanted to do um, hospital, which I'm still set on. And I recently have been more set on trying to do a pediatric specialty. Uh, we have a couple like 
in the actual farm D program, there's like a lot of electives you can take like for whatever you want to specialize in. And I'm looking at the pediatric one, but I can't take it till next year. So currently I'm thinking about doing like a hospital peds rotation. I'm in the um, peds club here inside the pharmacy. There's like clubs for every single specialty you could think of. I'm in the peds club. I've been in it for like the, my entire, I started as a freshman, so three years. And I've heard from like a bunch of pharmacists across the country who are doing like crazy things. Like there was this one lady who came on and talked about how she was like an emergency um, NICU pharmacist. And I was like, I did not even know that job existed. So I think definitely something in pediatrics is what I want to do. Very cool. Thank you. Okay. So it's kind of funny because um, I jump around a lot um, <laughs> in this stage, what I think I might want to go into. Um, and Sydney and Katie definitely hit it right on the head, the two that I'm kind of stuck deciding between. Um, there is a small part of me that also um, wants to go into the path of community pharmacy. I worked there um, last summer in a community pharmacy uh, just as a pharmacy tech. Um, and it is a challenging uh, career path, but it's so rewarding. Um, there definitely are so many instances that I can remember just feeling really great about being able to talk to a patient, um, help them in like even the small ways that I could as a pharmacy technician. Uh, so I can't imagine what the pharmacists are able to experience. Um, and as with like ambulatory care, um, that's a little bit um, of kind of what I'm more leaning toward a little bit now, um, kind of the best of both worlds with um, just being able to um, have, still have the interactions with the patients, but more of like a professional sit down setting. Um, is kind of what's really interesting. Thank you guys. Um, and Sydney, I definitely want to come back to Honors College because I know that they're gonna wanna hear a student's perspective. I just wanted to clarify one thing that I'm seeing in the chat about kind of the difference between BSPS and PharmD and how that all works. So when a student applies to Purdue from high school, all of them, regardless of what your goal is ultimately upon graduation, everybody comes in and is labeled pharmaceutical sciences. And I know that's a little bit frustrating because people don't understand that and they think, no, I don't want that. I want PharmD. Everybody is labeled pharmaceutical sciences according to Purdue. Then as a freshman that summer before classes start, you will have your first advising appointment. Well, you're, you'll meet your advisor, you'll talk about classes, you're talking about AP and dual credit and how does all this work and what is Purdue really like. During that appointment, you will clarify with your advisor whether you want to pursue the PharmD path or the BSPS path or you could say, I don't wanna decide yet, I wanna keep the path to both open. And then internally, we will label you as either pre-farm or BSPS or both. So everybody comes in pharmaceutical sciences and then we create those labels internally. So at Purdue, everybody is considered pharmaceutical sciences until you get into the PharmD program and then that is when your label would change. So I just wanted to make sure you guys all understood that and how that labeling works. It does not close any doors or keep anybody from pursuing their goals. Okay, Sydney, talk a little bit about Honors College and your experience with that. Okay, so I'll let Kara say a little bit too because we're actually both in the Honors College, but um, the Honors College is just kind of like one extra step that you can add on to pharmacy. And the reason I decided to apply to the Honors College was because of literally a Zoom exactly like this. Um, and it's just one more way through the Honors College, we get to take classes and meet kids that are outside, like completely outside of any of the classes that I were taking as pharmacists. You know, we're with a lot of nursing kids and pre-med and things like that. So, you know, I get to have classes with my roommate that's going to be in education and things like that. And so it's really fun. And it's also just more opportunities for, I mean, for scholarships, that's another thing, but also just a way to, you know, meet kids and you get to do all kinds of, it's just another, I'm talking a lot, but it's just another group of kids that you get to be um, associated with and get to kind of call home. And um, the Honors College is, it's a really nice environment as well, I will say. 
Yeah, to sort of add on to what Sydney was saying, um, it is, uh, like she was saying, it's a community of students. We also get our own uh, residential halls, which is really nice as a freshman coming in. Um, and it's funny because Sydney and I are on the same floor, the exact same building. Um, and that's how I met her. Um, and I'd say it's been a really great experience so far. Um, the classes like she was talking about, you have roughly about 25 extra credits uh, of honors you have to take, um, which seems scary, but um, in the long run, you can complete these by doing research, um, contracting some of your regular classes to be honors classes, um, going to study abroad. Um, and so it's definitely not as scary um, or as challenging to complete as it seems. Um, I've met a lot of people from it, a lot of my friends from it. Um, my pharmacy mentor is actually um, an alumna of the college or the honors college. Um, so it's just been a really great way to learn more about Purdue and um, the community. Thanks, you guys. Um, I'm seeing a question in the chat asking for your opinion, you three students. Um, the question is, what other schools were Katie, Sydney, and Kara looking at, and why did they pick Purdue? If you guys don't mind sharing a little bit about that thought process. Sure. So classic Indiana kid. I also was looking at Butler um, down in Indy. And then another, I guess this is kind of a wild card, but I was actually looking at Samford, which is in Birmingham, Alabama. I don't know if any of you have heard of that. It's pretty small. Um, those were the other two I was looking at. Neither of them are quite as renowned as Purdue. You know, Purdue's program is ranked much higher. Um, and Butler is technically closer to me because I'm from Southern Indiana. Um, but, and the campus was nice. But what I liked about Purdue is just how organized the program was. I'm a really big, like, got to stay organized and stay on top of things. And I like to be not necessarily rigid, but just have a structure and know exactly what, where I'm headed, what I need. And Purdue is very much that way. You know, you can go and they tell you to have a pie chart, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. That tells you exactly what you need to know going into PharmD. And there's a list of every single class that I need to have credit for and have taken. And I just, I personally really like that. And then one thing that was unique about Purdue Pharmacy as well is that they actually have a pharmacy on campus that we get to work in as P1s, which I'm sure you can add a little bit more onto that, Katie. Um, but that really spoke to me just because I can get some more experience um, in a pharmacy. I was also a classic Indiana kid between Butler and Purdue. And my wild card was University of Arizona. I always wanted to move to Arizona and I, I picked Purdue uh, like because first of all, they're ranked a lot higher up in the prestige level and it's also a lot closer to home. But my sister actually just committed to ASU. So I'm going to get my Arizona fix in. But I picked Purdue overall for um, that. And then also for, I came here on a visit sophomore year and I went down into our lab G16 and talked to two sophomores or two um, P1s long time ago and I was like yeah the they made it just feel so homey they showed me the puzzle piece it was very organized and like at Butler I think once you get admitted into Butler you are in the program for all six years which is nice because it yes it's scary that like you have to do your two years pre-farm before you get into pharmacy school but it also like kept me on my toes I was like okay I have to do good like I'm gonna give it my all right now because I have to make it into the next step and then what was, yeah, that's the first part. Another side note, someone asked about learning communities. I lived in our learning community freshman year and it was awesome. It was so much fun. Those who live in honors college, which is such a nice, like perfect dorm. They have huge rooms. And I lived in Wiley, which is an all boys dorm now, which was the opposite of honors college, but it was so much fun living in this, um, like these tiny little rooms with the girl who's, or my roommate was um, also in pharmacy and she's still in pharmacy now and we are still best friends, but I live in the learning community. It was so nice to be able to like walk across the hall and ask people questions about homework. Like my whole floor was all girls in pharmacy and we all did homework together like every, almost every day. And um, our RA was actually like a P2. So we got a bunch of experience living in the learning community. And I would definitely recommend people do that. Yeah, so being from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, I of course was looking at 
um, University of Pittsburgh for Pharmacy, which has a, slim, a similar structure to their pharmacy program where it's the two years of undergrad and then the four-year graduate program. Um, I also looked at Duquesne University, which is also in the Pittsburgh area. Um, I went out of state to University of Michigan, um, University of Kentucky, um, University of North Carolina. Um, I was fortunate that I actually started my college process sophomore year. So I got in right before COVID hit um, and I was able to tour a lot of places. Um, and I can honestly say that Purdue probably had the best tour out of any of the ones I went to. Um, I don't know what it was, but people were just so welcoming, so nice. Um, they, whenever I would go up to a student, they would always be willing to talk to me. Um, so it was just overall such a great experience that for some reason I didn't really get at any other college campus. Um, and so I, I really had um, a good experience going on uh, my college tour at Purdue. Thank you. Man, you guys are keeping Mrs. Ringer busy with all these questions. I think that is awesome. I love how much you're asking. Um, I wanted to just touch on a few things and then we can go back to the students sharing their information. Um, I, I just wanted to make sure that we touch on a few things that I believe sets Purdue apart from several other pharmacy schools. The fact that you guys are here tonight tells me you're obviously interested in Purdue, you're interested in pharmacy, but just like these three, you're probably looking at other majors, you're probably looking at other colleges. So I just wanna share a few things that I believe set us apart so that as you're creating your pros and cons list, you've got some good information about Purdue. So one thing that we offer, and we are one of only about four or five pharmacy schools that offer this, we offer a certificate in nuclear pharmacy. Are either three of you considering that? Maybe. Yes, I'm, oh, I'm probably oh, go gonna ahead. do the, I'm gonna do the nuclear um, elective next semester, I believe. Okay. That's what I'm at. So Katie, could you talk a little bit about, could you, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, are you able to explain what nuclear pharmacy is? Minimally for my friends okay. who are in that class right now. Um, nuclear pharmacy is like, you're working with drugs and things that have a very, very short half-life. So there's people like working in nuclear pharmacies like all the time. It's more of like if you've ever seen one of those um, things where you like put your hands in the gloves inside the box. It's that type of thing. And I've, I've met with a nuclear pharmacist once and he said at their pharmacy, it was like um, you can work like overnight shifts because people need to like have those medications in the morning. And it's very, very specialized. We are like one of three people who um, who offer the certificate. And if you get that certificate like outside of school, it's very expensive to pay for the uh, certification. And then you could just take, I think it's, I don't know how many classes it is to get the certification here, five. Yeah, you could take those um, to get it here. I, a lot of my friends are in the nuclear elective right now. I did not take the elective this semester, but they had a test today and they said they thought it went well, so. <laughs> yeah, so it's a series of five classes that you take during your, time in pharmacy school, very easy to fit into your regular curriculum, no additional cost. And you then upon completion are eligible to sit for the licensure exam for a nuclear pharmacist. If you never work as a nuclear pharmacist, okay, but you have that additional certification that just makes you more marketable when you are interviewing for an internship for a full-time position, um, if you do choose to work as a nuclear pharmacist, it's a super cool career and you don't have to touch anybody to work as a nuclear pharmacist. You're mostly working in a lab. You are mixing radioactive materials and it's for a lot of imaging. So for example, if you have to go get a PET scan and you either get injected or drink this material, it then lights up in your body so that when you get that imaging, they're able to see that. So that's what a nuclear pharmacist does. And it's a really cool option. We are one of three or four pharmacy schools that offer those classes. If like Katie said, if you later decide 10 years into your career, 
gosh, that nuclear pharmacy thing, that seemed kind of cool. You would have to pay thousands of dollars to go back to school, hundreds of hours of classes to complete that. So while you're at Purdue, we always encourage students to at least take that first class to see what you think. Um, another thing that sets us apart, and Sydney mentioned this briefly, is we do have a retail pharmacy on campus that is a working pharmacy, but also a teaching pharmacy. And it is open to students, faculty, staff, and the community to get their prescriptions filled. So during students' first year in pharmacy school, they work in that pharmacy as a class. So we do not expect anybody to have work experience in a pharmacy to be a competitive applicant to pharmacy school. We are gonna teach you everything you need to know. So, and I know Kara mentioned that she has worked as a pharmacy tech and that is amazing and that's gonna be really helpful for her, but that is not a requirement to be a competitive applicant to pharmacy school. Um, and then lastly, the one other thing that I believe really sets us apart is that two plus four program. And I can't remember who mentioned it, but two years of pre-farm plus four years of pharmacy school gets you a doctorate degree in six years at Purdue. We cram a lot into those two years of pre-farm, but we feel that in the end, that's two less years of tuition because the majority of pharmacy schools require an undergraduate degree first. Two less years of tuition, two more years of earning that paycheck. So for us, that is another thing that sets us apart and that a lot of students are really attracted to. Um, I saw a question in here and I'm gonna ask you girls to answer. It was something about um, what is a typical week like with classes as a first year student in the pharmacy program? And then I would ask all three of you to answer, just kind of share what a typical day is like and maybe add in like a favorite class and maybe like a most challenging class. Yeah, um, as I kind of mentioned, I'm really organized and I'm also a morning person. So this semester I shoved all of my classes into the morning. So I was actually able to, so I go to class all morning, usually from like 8.30 to probably 12.30 or 1.30. And then I have my afternoons completely free. And being in pharmacy, you do have a lot of lab classes. So I do have three labs a week, but they fit in pretty nicely. So basically my mornings are school and a lot of my afternoons are spent, you know, doing homework or trying to prepare for tests because unlike high school, you have to prepare a little longer for tests. Um, and then my evenings, depend, unless I have like an exam that night or the next day or something, my evenings are typically pretty free um, unless I actually just broke my ankle. So they're a little not free right now, but um, they were. <laughs> So it's definitely very manageable if maybe that was your concern, wondering what a day looks like. It's not, I'm not constantly doing schoolwork. I'm not constantly bored. It's really, it's a pretty good mix. Um, I'm busy, but I like it and it's fun. And I would say my favorite class that I'm in right now is probably organic chemistry. Um, as I mentioned before, I love chemistry and that's a big reason why I chose pharmacy. So I just find it really fun. And it's also a pharmacy specific organic chemistry that we get to take. So it's small, it's only pharmacy kids. And that also makes it really fun and enjoyable. And then um, probably the most challenging class I'm in is anatomy and physiology. But, and you are gonna hear that a lot, but I would say it's probably just also because I'd never taken a class like that. And the last time I was in biology was my freshman year of high school. So it's been a little bit, but it's once again, it's still manageable. And I'm not doing homework all day, every day. I mean, I'm here on a Zoom with you. So I'm in clubs and I do things for fun, you know, go out on the weekends and have game nights and things like that. So, yeah. Um, mine's pretty similar. I'll, mine is a little bit different just because I'm in grad school now, technically, and I can barely even remember what a week in my life was like two years ago. But same kind of thing. Um, once you're in pharmacy school, it's a little bit less lab heavy, a lot more like um, material heavy, like the big class that everyone has to take in pharmacy school is therapeutics, which is like they bring in a bunch of professionals on like every disease and every drug ever. So it's like very top tier. You're learning it, but there's just a lot of material in there. So a typical day, we all have the same um, 
class schedule now that we're in the program. Um, we have class from like 11 to two every day, which is not that bad because then I study in the mornings and have my nights free. And um, I'm also in a sorority and I was on the VP board this year and I was like, that was taking up a lot of my time last semester, but this semester it's a little bit more free. And then same thing, I still have enough time to go out on the weekends. Never bored. There's always something I could be learning, but um, yeah, you, step, you definitely need to figure out how to like um, time manage, but it comes with time. Yeah, so like uh, Sydney was talking about, um, normally you'll take organic chemistry um, your first year, the spring semester, um, students do often say that's a pretty challenging class. Um, but so far, uh, I'm sure Sydney will say this too, it's a really fun um, and interesting class to take. Um, I'm also taking anatomy, which is a little bit heavier um, with physics too. Um, and so I'd say those are my three biggest classes. I'm taking um, a speech class, which is the EDPS 315, which is more of a collaborative leadership class. Um, I really like that. Um, it's a little different from um, your traditional speech class um, in that it's kind of more of a collaborative leadership stance um, to a speech class. And um, I'm also taking one of the honors electives that's required for um, honors college students, uh, which is super fun. Um, I actually, uh, a few weeks ago, I got to design uh, a playground from scratch with my group members, which um, was really cool. We're working on a college board game now. Um, and so I'd say class-wise, um, it can get heavy, but it's super rewarding. Um, and it's how I've met a lot of my friends. Um, and uh, club-wise, um, I'm in Pharmacy Ambassadors, of course, pre-pharmacy club, um, but there are hundreds of Purdue clubs uh, that you can get involved with on campus. Um, I'm in book club, art club, which I'm going to later tonight. Um, and uh, so there's dozens of others I could name off, but um, there's definitely a bunch of ways you can uh, get involved. And like Sydney said, um, it can be a lot, but it's not at all impossible. You're not gonna be spending the entire day studying. Um, it'll take a little time to get used to how to manage your time, but once you do, uh, you'll get the hang of it. Awesome. We've been talking a lot. Is there anybody that has a question that like maybe wasn't in the chat or a question that somebody wants to ask? Um, hi, uh, good hi. evening. Um, I'm actually, I posted a question in the chat box regarding being in honors college. Um, would this really affect the decision for admitting students to pharmacy program versus those who are not in honors? So if I could just clarify, are you asking like, does being in honors college give a student an advantage or yes. disadvantage? Okay. Yes. Um, I'll share my opinion and then you guys can share what you think. I would say it, it, it is a great thing to have because it allows you opportunities to network. It allows you opportunities to do some deeper thinking, um, but it is never considered better or worse to have or not have. Um, it, it is not for everybody. For those that really enjoy that, I think it is a great opportunity. The admissions committee for pharmacy school appreciates seeing it, but it would not be considered a demerit for a student that does not have it. Um, thank you. I guess my next question uh, dependent on that is, um, we were not sure where exactly um, when we, when my daughter and I filled out the application or when she did it, we couldn't see, um, you know, anything about the owner's college in the application. So does it require a separate application or the decision of admitting a student to owner's college is dependent on other things? Like you don't really have to submit a separate application for that. I'm not clear on, on that exactly. So... Uh I'm not completely clear because it's not done through the College of Pharmacy. 
but it's my understanding, and Sydney and Kara, I'm sure you can talk about this better than I can. It's my understanding that you get invited to apply. Is that correct? Sydney's shaking her head no. Okay. No, so actually it's a part of your common app and it's a separate tab um, and you have to select like yes or no, whether you want to apply to the Honors College. So, and you have to do that early action. So that's only gonna be an option for you before November 1st. So if you were like coming in this coming like fall of 2022, you we would have had to apply for the Honors College by November 1st. After that, it's no longer an option. So just to clarify, once you are in Purdue, you can apply to join Honors College as a sophomore or as a junior, but you cannot, if you miss that first deadline, you cannot live in Honors College your freshman year. Right. I'm not really sure how it works like when you're older, like as a sophomore or a junior, but as a freshman, yeah, that opportunity, you won't be in Honors your freshman year. Yeah, so if you want information, and I had somebody else in the chat ask me as well about joining Honors College after freshman year, send me an email and I would be happy to send you more information about that. Thank you. Um, about Honors College, yeah. I probably know where like 50 or 60 of my classmates lived freshman year and I do not think any of them lived in Honors College. So it's not like a super, super huge thing. Where like, oh my God, if you were an honors kid, like in high school, it's kind of like, a, oh, you were an AP, you were an honors kid. You're like top of the whatever. I, I feel like it's not as serious in college. Yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah, I, just, there's so many more students here and so many more opportunities. Kara, go ahead. Sorry, I jump in it's kind of more of a thing as you kind of like take the opportunities that you can and it's what you make of it um so I'd say it's definitely got me connections to people like I said my mentor was an honors alumna um so that definitely connected me to her um but again I have to be the person to step up and take those opportunities um but I would say that the Honors College definitely is great in the aspect that um, it's just another community where you get to kind of make more opportunities as you go through Purdue. Um, Katie, you talked a little bit about learning community, is that correct? So um, just for those of you that maybe don't know what a learning community is, it is a floor in a particular res hall that is dedicated to, some are dedicated to majors, some are dedicated to uh, career paths or even different hobbies. Um, so pharmacy has a learning community and Pam is actually the advisor for that. So she probably can talk more about this than me, but you are assigned a floor and everybody on your floor, or at least the majority of people on your floor are also pharmacy, either BSPS or pre-farm students. And like I mentioned, the first two years of BSPS and pre-farm are almost exactly the same. So you're almost guaranteed to have a buddy to walk to class with, to study with for at least one of your other classes. Um, so I heard a story a couple of years ago about learning community. Um, let's say it was a biology exam and it was like biology 110 at 7.30 in the morning. So everybody on that floor decided, let's all meet in the lobby at seven and we're gonna walk to that exam together. So it's seven o'clock and they're all looking around and like, wait, where's Susie? She slept through her alarm, but because they all knew each other in this learning community, they were able to go knock on her door, get her up and she did not miss her exam. So it's things like that that make that learning community a really cool option Students get really connected, they get close, they study together, they're all like-minded, all similar goals. So it's a really neat option if that's something that would be of interest to you. So we only have a little more than 10 minutes left. I wanna make sure that I talk about some upcoming visit days. For those of you that have already been admitted to Purdue, there are some programs called Purdue's For Me, and if you go to the undergraduate admissions page on Purdue's website, you can search for Purdue's For Me and you will see all of the available dates. And it is specifically for admitted students. 
you will learn about housing and meal plans and financial aid, but you'll also pick the major that you've been admitted to and you will have a specific information session, I guess, for a couple of hours within that major. And for pharmacy, we do a student panel, we'll do lunch together, we'll have faculty and staff talk about their experiences, we'll talk about careers. So it's a really neat way to get to campus to meet some more people. Um, we offer a building tour so you can see some of the labs, lots of things there. And then specifically, the College of Pharmacy is doing a visit day on March 30th, very similar to Purdue's for me, but it's just for pharmacy. And we just sent out those invitations, I think a little over a week ago, and I know it's already full. So I'm actually in a meeting tomorrow, we're gonna to talk about whether we can expand that program and invite more people. But I do know that there is a waiting list option. So if any of you are interested in that, please get on the wait list so that we can see how many more people are interested. Um, and then we'll look at being able to expand that. If we're not able to, you will get the exact same information at a Produce for Me day. It just won't be as in depth of a day. Um, okay, so with just a few minutes left, if I could ask the three of you to maybe share like last words, pieces of advice, something maybe you wish you knew in high school that's helpful now, anything that you think would be helpful to share with, with the audience. Going first is a little scary here, but- <laughs> No um, pressure. <laughs> I would say, I don't know how old a lot of you are if you're still you know, deciding on a major, but in general, in high school, take as many hard classes as you can. I cannot tell you enough how much that's going to benefit you. I mean, because coming into pharmacy, you know, it's a lot of science classes and having background experience in tougher classes is only going to help you. You know, it's, you're going to be better off taking that harder class and maybe getting a B rather than taking the easy class and getting an A. You're, it's, it's going to benefit you so much. And I can't, tell you enough. I'm so glad that I did that because I'm seeing now the students that are kind of struggling um, because they didn't do that. So it, it just made their path a little harder. And I guess another thing I would say just coming into college um, in general, don't be afraid to just try to talk to anybody, meet new people. You, know, you never know who you're going to stick with or you know who you're going to meet. Just you never know. Um, but yeah, that's I guess that's the best advice, short term advice I can give you. Um, I definitely would give the advice to incoming freshmen that everybody feels weird. Like I thought that I was alone. I was the only one who was like, oh my God, my life is changing. I feel so insane like all the time, but everyone feels weird and everyone wants to be friends. Like if you want to walk up to someone randomly and be like, hey, uh, you want to study together? Like literally random people. I've made the best of friends by kids in the library who I heard talking about a similar class or a class I took. And I was like, oh my God, I know it's on the test. Like, let me help you. Like, it's just being open and also leaving your door open when in your dorm freshman year, that's how you make a bunch of friends. But overall, if someone were to just tell me that like, it's okay if you feel weird or like you're homesick or like, I don't feel like this is for me. Every single person feels like that. And no one ever told me that before this. So I thought I was weird, but you're definitely not. And just specific to Purdue, I would say um, definitely find a like a study spot that's not at um, your dorm. My favorites personally are um, the Walk, which is like a when you guys go on the tour here, you'll see all the buildings. There's like four or five libraries on campus. All of them, I have very specific chairs that I like to sit in because I spend a lot of time with them. But yeah, overall do things, join things, say yes to a lot of stuff freshman year. If you hate it, stop doing it. If you love it, continue on. I joined like probably 15 clubs in my time here and I'm still currently part of like four or five of them. So I definitely, I think just go for it and then you'll have no regrets because you tried everything at least once. Yeah, I definitely feel the same with Sydney and Katie when they said that college is a little scary at first. Um, going out of state, I was super scared to leave my family and my friends back at home. Um, but now I'm kind of seeing it as just another step I'm taking. Um, 
going into a whole new place with whole new people. Um, it's actually been really great. Um, it's opened my eyes to all these different um, perspectives um, and experiences. So I've actually really loved um, getting out a little bit and experiencing the world a little bit more. Um, any other advice? I would just say that um, it's important to take challenging classes, but it's also important to take time to yourself. Um, remember the friends you have, spend some time with them, uh, with your family, um, and just enjoy high school um, and but be excited for college too. Thank you all so, so much. I know that we were not able to answer all of these questions. So anything that did not get addressed, please, please, please email me. My name is Story Pedley, and I will be happy to share additional information, clarify things, answer additional questions. Probably won't be till tomorrow. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be doing that tonight. Um, but please send me an email, and I'm happy to send you more information. There are so many things that I had on my list to talk about and we just ran out of time. So please follow up and let me know what else I can share with you so that, oh, and Mrs. Ringer put her email in there too. So she's our other advisor and she is a great, great resource as well. So please, should we email you from our Purdue email? That would be just fine. Any email that you want is just fine to contact us. Um, we will stay on the call for a little bit longer if you guys have additional questions, but otherwise, I just wanna say thank you again. I'm sure you had a million other things that you could have done tonight, and we really appreciate the time you spent with us. So thank you, thank you, and we will hang out for a little bit if you have additional questions. Thank you, guys. Um, I just have one more question. So by, sure. admitted, uh, by admitted for um, you know the visits, do you mean students who already accepted their admission offers or just to yes. get the admission decision? So the Purdue's for me, you do not have to have paid your deposit or said, yes, I'm coming to Purdue, but you have to have been admitted to Purdue for the Purdue's for me program. There's also something called um, introducing Purdue that is also this spring and that is for students that have not been admitted. And it's probably for students that are maybe a little bit earlier in their college search process, very similar information though. I mean, the days are, are set up very similarly. Thank you. Hi, I just have a question um, regarding the Purdue for me and then the the one on March 30th, which I guess is more specific to the pharmacy students or prospective sure. students. Um, what's like, is there like a big difference between the two? Because I was a, initially initially signed up for the Purdue for me and then I switched over to the um, one more dedicated to the prospective pharmacy students. Yeah, so the Purdue's for me is open to all admitted students for all majors. So on the day that you come for a Purdue's for me, there will be thousands of students and their families on campus, which can be kind of cool because it makes for a really busy day, but it's also a lot of people on campus. Um, the day on March 30th is just pharmacy students. So there will not be thousands of other people there. That it is a day dedicated just to admitted pharmacy students. Um, very similar structure to the day. You will get all of the same information. The main difference on the 30th is we are going to be doing some very pharmacy specific events. So you'll be able to do, and actually Mrs. Ringer is going to lead a activity where you're going to do like a hands-on activity that day where I don't know if you're going to like make a salve or do something. Um, we're going to have Purdue Pete there. We're going to have the Boilermaker Express train so you can go on rides throughout campus. It's just kind of an added bonus for admitted students, but very similar information. So if you can't make one, the other one will be just as great. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, hello, uh, I just have a quick question because I'm considering between like two plus four like PharmD program compared to like six years of full like PharmD program. 
Sure. Does two plus a four from the program provide like more like labs uh, during their first two years compared to like six years full from the colleges or? So it depends you for pharmacy schools that require an undergraduate degree, you can truly major in anything and apply to pharmacy school. The list of pre-pharmacy prerequisite classes are pretty traditional across the board, regardless of what pharmacy school. It's gonna be general biology, general chemistry, organic chemistry, anatomy and physiology. So the majority of students that do a four plus four are probably going to choose a major that is very science and lab-based, biochemistry, chemistry, biology. Um, but I suppose you could major in theater and apply to pharmacy school, and then you would not have as many labs. But I, the number of labs that you have in a four plus four program versus a two plus four program, probably not a big difference. Thank you. Um, how oh, hard sorry. would you say the coursework for the honors colleges compared to the regular one? I'll let you girls answer that. So I don't know if Sydney's still in the chat. Oh yeah, sorry, she kind yeah. of got bumped up. But um, so we'll both talk about it, but it's definitely not that much different. Um, what I was talking about before with the 25, uh, credit hours. So there's, um, I want to say, is it nine, Sydney, that have to be, or no, it's five, sorry, that have to be honor specific. So what I took this semester and last semester was a one credit elective class. Uh, super fun. It's called the Evolution of Ideas. So I'm in play right now. Um, so there's a bunch of different topics that you can do. So you have those five honors uh, credit classes you have to take. And then you have um, like about 19, 20 others um, that you can do um, that range from doing research for credit or um, honors contracting classes, which is taking a normal class and converting it um, into like an honors class by doing like an extra project or two along the semester. Um, you work with a professor to do that. Um, and you can also do study abroads. Um, some of the honors students will do that during their breaks and they'll get um, a few honors credits uh, through that. Um, I might be missing a few other things, but that's the basics of it. Um, I Honors class wise, uh, there are certain sections of classes that are honors specific for honors students. Um, I took an honors microeconomics class last semester, uh, which was a bit more challenging, but it's also nice because the classes tend to be a little bit smaller. So you kind of get more of um, a professor uh, relationship. Um, so it is just a little bit difficult um, because it is sometimes extra classes, but I wouldn't say it's anything that's not um, possible. Yeah, Kara pretty much covered all of it. Honestly, I would equate have honors yeah. to having a minor. You know, if you were considering having a minor in business or a minor in nutrition or something like that, it's almost like doing that. You know, you have some extra classes that you take for the minor. Well, you just have some extra classes you take for honors. And um, it's a little bit different with pharmacy. Actually, um, my honors advisor had told me that we actually get some classes dropped off from our honors requirement for Nine pharmacy. Credits. Yeah. So we actually don't have to make the full 24. So we get nine kind of knocked off because we're pharmacy. So we're busy and we go into grad school so soon that we don't have all that undergraduate free space to kind of put things. And, you know, I'm actually going on a Maymester through the honors college study abroad and that's six credits. So that's already a big chunk of my requirement. So, yeah. Are there any specific dorms that are uh, listed for the honors, uh, not sorry, uh, for the pharmacy learning communities? Yes. So Pam, is it Owen this year? 
So Owen Hall this year is dedicated to the pharmacy learning community. Um, we don't normally switch them very often, but recently it has switched. It used to be in Wiley Hall, but now it has moved to Owen and I anticipate it staying in Owen for a while. So if you can look at the campus map, you'll be able to see where Owen is. And it's pretty centrally located. It's near our rec center. It's pretty close to the pharmacy building. Um, it, it's a good location near the dining courts. I am biased, but Owen is the most fun dorm out of all of them, <laughs> but I am I am biased. All right, thank you. All right, if we don't have any other questions, again, thank you all so much. Katie and Kara and Sydney and Pam, thank you guys for your help. It was a great night. Loved all the energy. Thanks so much. Thank you.